What's up people, this is Milos. Welcome back to my channel as I take you on another exciting GIS and data visualization journey with R. This time I'm gonna show you how you can overlay your 3D relief maps with railways using OpenStreetMap data and then rendering everything into a 3D object using a ray shader package in R. All right, guys, our first step is to install and then load the packages that we need in this session. For that purpose, we'll be using the Pacman package. And if you don't have it already installed, you should definitely install it. And to install it, you can simply use install packages. And then here in the form of a string, you provide the Pacman. Once you have the Pacman installed, we are going to use one of the functions here, which is called pload or package load. This is basically going to install and then load the packages that you need. And here you need to provide a list of packages. The first one we'll need is the geodata package, which we can use for fetching the national boundaries. In this specific context, we'll be fetching the national boundaries of North Macedonia. The second one is the asset package, which you need for working with the railways uh, shapefile. So we will be actually converting uh, that one into the asset object and working directly with the asset object. Then, of course, we also need to work with uh, the digital elevation model. And the easiest way to download one is using the elevator package. And since we are working here with the raster file, we also will need the Terra package. There's also the tidyverse for which we'll be only using dplyr this time for data wrangling. And finally, we also need the ray shader for creating uh, our 3D map. In today's tutorial, once again, we'll be working with OpenStreetMap data and we'll be getting the railways from this website. But before we do that, we actually need to create another folder within our main working directory where we will actually be unzipping uh, only those files for the railways that we will need. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is define the main pathway. The main pathway is going to be my current working directory. So this is what I define. And then I'm actually going to create here a Macedonia directory uh, that I'm going to then use for uh, storing these uh, uh, railway files. So I'm actually going to call this Macedonia underscore OSM. And then I'm going to create the directory. And to do that, you simply need to use here dir.create from base R. And it's going to be named here Macedonia dir. So this directory is going to be created in our main working directory. Now, what we also need here is we need to specify uh, this outer directory pathway. So I'm just going to call this out there Macedonia. And then I'm going to use here uh, a base null from base R to create this. So we're going to be actually starting off here with the main path. And then we're going to be adding to this main path then other things. One of them that we need to do here is this uh, slash uh, and then followed by the Macedonia there. So this is going to actually create that one. And once we do that, we can then set the working directory to this newly created uh, pathway, which leads uh, to the newly created folder which is uh, this Macedonia deer. And then uh, once you do that, you can also inspect whether you are now having this one and whether you navigate it to this one. As I mentioned, we will be downloading the railways data from the OpenStreetMaps and in specific from one of its servers, which is called geofabric.de. And we used it in one of the previous tutorials where I actually showed how you can download railways data and then create a 2D map and how you can uh, download the data using two methods uh, depending on actually whether the country data is available in a single file or the country data is divided into sub-regional data. In the case of North Macedonia, there is a single file and it's quite small, but nevertheless, if you're dealing with a file which is quite bigger, what I will do here is before I even start downloading, uh, I would actually set here a timeout and increase it. So the timeout here is in terms of the seconds. If we do, for example, 999 seconds, so this is more than 10 minutes. Um, then the second thing which we will do, again, taking from this tutorial, the link, this would be the link for the Geofabric. I really encourage you to take a look at that tutorial. And I'm also going to provide the link to this Geofabric database where you can actually find the links also for other countries. So uh, this link that we'll be using in today's tutorial looks like this. And I'm just going to convert it here into a string so that we can next use download of file from Bazaar to download it to our working directory that we previously created. The first thing that I want to do here, though, is I want to fetch the file name from this one. 
And doing that in R is using this space name and then providing this URL. So basically it's gonna cut off only this last part, which is this zipped uh, file. And once you do that, you can go ahead and use the download file. So over here, you need to pass three things. The first one is the URL you'll be using. The second file is the uh, file name of this file that you're gonna be downloading. So we also have that. And the final one is the binary mode that you should be using here. So if you follow all the steps you downloaded, you should be able to see this file here. So Macedonia latest free dot shp dot zip. So this is a zip file. Now within this one, you're not going to only find the railways. You're also going to find things like points of interest, roads, waterways, and many other things. So what we actually need here is we don't need all of them. And if you actually extract all of them, it might take a bit longer time, especially for some other countries which have more uh, data available. Now, in this case, what we're going to actually do is the same trick as we did in the previous tutorial, which is we're going to unzip only the file which has a railways in its name. And this is how we're going to do that. We're going to first of all create an object called zip file. And this is going to be the one that is going to enlist all the files in the current working directory. Remember, this is where we have the zip folder. Now, in the second one, we're going to create another object which is going to contain the name of the zip file that we need. And this is the one that is going to contain railways. Now, how do we get that? We use grab here to actually uh, take only the one that has or only those shape files that have the name railways in it. And then what we say here is that we want to unzip and we want to unzip this uh, destination file that we have. And uh, we also want to provide the list here of all the files. Now, what is important here at the end of this one, you want to actually include here a name so that it's only unzipping the ones that have railways in their name. That's very, very important. Okay, and once you actually do that, you uh, just need to here uh, specify some more things within this uh, uh, grab uh, one. So one of them is ignore case. So that is true. You, are, you don't care if it's upper or lower case. And then you also want to return here uh, the value. So that's basically it. Once you have that, you will be unzipping only the railways file. And uh, I actually, I can even show you how this looks like. So first of all, what we're going to do, we're going to just run this. And this is going to give us these things. And then we're going to go for unzipping. So for the unzipping, we're going to be unzipping here, of course, the destination file. So that's, that's the zipped file over there. And then uh, over here uh, for the files, we're going to be taking only the files that have railways in the name. So this is the one that we define at zip underscore name. All right. And then we here need where we want to uh, where we want to extract these. Right. We want to extract these to this out there Macedonia, which we previously uh, did. And then we also want to overwrite anything that, that exists there. So and once you run the unzip, you should now be able to see not one, but six files here. So there are additional five files, which are shape files. And as you can see, they have railways in their name. And this is exactly what we need for our next step which is loading the uh, railways of North Macedonia into, into R. And for that purpose, we can simply use the SF package. So I'm gonna call this rail underscore SF, and then from SF, we can use STR read. So over here, what we provide is simply this name that we found uh, here. So uh, it's this one that ends with dot SHP. So we simply need to uh, copy that one. Put it here and one thing also no matter what country you're using here it's always going to have this generic name so that's also useful to to remember as we said at the beginning we will also be fetching uh the national boundaries which we will then use to crop the digital elevation model area that we need and again we will be using geodata i'm using geodata here because it allows you to fetch the administrative boundaries as well if you actually want it if you're not really interested in uh, the national boundaries. So for now, we'll be working with the national boundaries. Uh, and here you need to provide the ISO 3 code for the country of interest for North Macedonia. This is MKD. And then you need to provide a level here. If we choose here uh, zero, this would be the national level. If you choose one, that would be the next subnational level, usually regions or states. If you choose two, it's going to be another, even uh, more granular level, etc. So for now, we're just going to be putting this uh, 
0. And then for the path here, we can simply say that we want uh, this to be in the main working directory, which we previously created. So this one, once we actually run this, this will download these uh, shape files to your local directory, but it's not going to be in the asset format. So what you need to do here is you also need to coerce this into an asset format using this uh, function stssf from the asset package. Having now the national boundaries in the asset format is going to allow us to fetch the digital elevation model using elevator and then crop only the area that fall within the Macedonia national boundaries. So let's actually create here an object which I'm going to call just ele, basically uh, a shorthand for elevation. And then from elevator, uh, once again, as we did in some previous tutorials, I'm just going to get here a roster. And then for the place for which we want to uh, get this, of course, I'm going to put here the country as an object that we previously created. And then uh, that is the level of detail. So I'm actually going to go for a bit lower level of detail here, which is 8. Uh, which is then comfortably going to allow me to render this object in no time. But if you're working with a small country like Macedonia, you might also want to increase this in order to increase also detail. And reverse, if you're working with a, a very large country, you actually might want to even further decrease this Z value. And then finally, how do you want to clip this resulting uh, digital elevation model? Well, I want to clip it by the Macedonian national boundaries. Another option is to clip this by the bounding box, and then you would get also a bit of the elevation model for the neighboring countries. This North Macedonia is a European country. I'll be using here Lambert as the model equal area projection, which is usually used for European countries, and this is the uh the actual uh how it looks like now if you're interested in some other country non-european country i warmly suggest that you check epsg.io which is a website where you can fetch uh, the one for any available country in the world and you can check one of the previous tutorials to see how actually i did that for now what we're going to do here is i'm going to simply define this one as crs not even lambert but just simply CRS and then uh, I'm going to put double quotation marks here so that uh, it can be used in R and once we do that what we want to do next is we want to first of all uh, convert this one from a raster uh, format into a Terra raster format which is not currently the case and once we do that uh, I'm going to again call Terra here and then I'm going to reproject using this project function I'm going to reproject into this uh, CRS. And then the very, very last step is to create an elevation matrix because a ray shader cannot really work with raster files on themselves. So what we need to do here is take this reprojected raster file and then uh, we need to take a ray shader. And in a ray shader, there's a very convenient function which is called a raster to matrix. And this is actually going to then uh, convert this into a matrix and allow us to work further with Rayshader. Okay, so we have now the digital elevation model only for North Macedonia, and we also have the railways, but the railways here are a bit complicated. Well, they're not that complicated because North Macedonia does, doesn't have many railways, but the thing is that the shapefile itself is quite complicated. So what we can do here is we can use a function from the asset package to reduce the number of points that a line has, and then uh, essentially also reducing the size so that we can also speed up our rendering later on in Rayshader. Also, what we want to do here is we want to take only rails and those with narrow gauge from the classes of OSM railways. And finally, what we also want to do here is we want to only choose the railways that fall within the boundaries of North Macedonia. The thing is, Oftentimes, with OpenStreetMap data, some of these lines go outside the boundaries of the country and we don't really need that in this case. So let's go ahead and then apply all these three steps. Let's start off by creating an object called country rail. And then let's put here into a pipe this rail SF object. And then let's do the first thing, which is filter. So again, as I said, uh, there are several classes here. You can check it also on the OpenStreetMap uh, website and they're all denoted by this F class column, which exists there. Now, what we want to do here is we want to loop through this one and choose only two classes, which are essentially rails, because there can also be a metro or subway or miniature. Again, for North Macedonia, 
there is only rail but if you bump into some other country this is what i would do so i would take them rail and the second class i would take here is the narrow narrow gauge but both are essentially railroads okay so once you actually have this then the second step is to clip off uh, any lines that fall outside of the boundaries of North Macedonia. And here we can actually use as the intersection. And then uh, we want to actually use here the country SF. So everything that falls within the boundaries. And then the final step is to simplify this topology, to simplify this polygon that we have these lines. And here we'll be using ST simplify from uh, asset package. Now here what you have are essentially there are more arguments but two are very important for us the first one is whether you want to preserve the polygons or not so because when simplifying things some of them might be dropped and what i would like here to do is i would like to preserve here uh, the topology or the polygons the second one is the tolerance level so how much you actually want to discard or not now here what is very important is you want to choose a, a higher number if you want to actually make it uh, you know rougher but also more simplified so we can for example go for 1000 so this is essentially what you what you are doing here is if you are working with degrees you need to specify degrees but if you are working with meters uh, then you need to specify here for meters all right so once we actually do that we are ready to go and work with ray shader to render our scene first and then also render our object and save it as a local image file. Okay, before we jump straight into writing a code that will render the scene for us, I would also like to define here the colors of uh, our digital elevation model. So what I opted in this tutorial is to have the blues palette or the palette of blue colors uh, for our digital elevation model and then to have a contrasty color which is yellow for the color of the railway. So in order to get the blue colors, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use HCL colors from BASAR and then here for the palettes I'm gonna take blues 3 so if you haven't checked yet you can check the HCL colors they're pretty useful here uh, this is gonna create the blues and then here I can also choose a number of colors I want for example I want to have a palette with four colors and finally here you can also define whether you want this to be in reverse order or not so i put here the reverse is false so it doesn't apply here meaning that i would like to have for uh higher areas i would have light color and then for the lower areas with lower uh, elevation values i'm gonna have dark colors all right so once you actually do that one thing you can do is you can inspect the colors you got here and for that you can use a scales package which i didn't include at the beginning so if you don't have it you should definitely include it uh, into into the brackets where you use the payload function from uh, pacman and then within this one uh we can actually use a function which is called show call basically this one is going to uh, plot the colors that we that we created so here i'm just going to say yeah i'm going to plot calls uh, the number of colors equals four and then I also want to include the labels so that maybe I, I can also see the labels okay so then once you actually run this what you will see is that indeed we do have the three colors out of these are indeed blues but the last one is white and actually I would like to make the I would like to make this image uh, really blue so I'm actually in the remaining steps where we use a ratio to render the scene I'm actually gonna uh, discard the white color which is the last one and take only the first three which are indeed uh, a different palettes of blue all right with this set we can go ahead and write the code which will render the scene so the first thing we need to do here is we need to call our uh, elevation matrix which is gonna serve here as a height map and once you do that you can go ahead and first of all create this height shade uh, based on it so here what we want to do is we want to define the texture that will be applied to uh, of course uh, this digital elevation model and this is where the blue colors kick in so here what you want to do is you want to use color ramp palettes from Bazaar which is gonna help you pass these colors but even more you can increase uh, the number of colors based on these base colors so as i said before from this calls 
object, I'm gonna take only those which go from one to three, basically only the blue colors, all right? And once I do that, I can even multiply these colors into even more blue colors. So, uh, for example, I can multiply to 128 or even more. The reason why I do that is I want to make the map as crisp as possible. Okay, so this is the base layer. Now, once you're ready with this, you can add, of course, the rail base. And we can do that, again, using a ray shader and using function add overlay. Now, within this one, we actually want to add a specific type of overlay. There can be uh, multiple types of overlay, but one of them, which we also used in one of the previous tutorials, is generate line overlay. Why are we using line? We're using line because this is a line stream object, the railways. All right, so over here, what you need to do is, first of all, define the polygons that you want to be using. So again, for us, this would be country rail, all right? The second one is, for which extent this applies. So what is gonna be the place where this is gonna be plotted. And over here, what you need to do is, you need to choose that a raster file, that's Terra raster file, which we reprojected, remember? So we reprojected it. And then the second thing that you wanna do here is also then check, okay, this is in that Lambert projection is also the country rail in the Lambert projection. So we just need to go back over here where we did these things and one thing that we'll notice here that this is really not transformed into that CRS so what we can do here is just add this one and say okay I want to transform so I'm just going to use here ST transform and then for the CRS you just pass here CRS okay once this is done once this is cleared off uh, we can go back here and then say okay these are now fine so both uh, the roster file which denotes digital elevation model and our uh, railway polygons are now in the same. So we are clear there. Okay, then you need to again define here the height map. So that will be this elevation map matrix object. And then here you enter the field of customization. Here you can, uh, you know, choose several things. One of them is the color of the railway, railways. Uh, what is going to be the size or the width of them. So for the color, as we said, we're going to go here for the yellow color. And this is the kind of a yellow color that I, that I chose here. Um, it actually goes maybe slightly towards orange, but uh, still it provides a very nice contrast. And then here, what you can also choose is what is going to be the width of the line in pixels. So the default one is, uh, the default is one, that's line width. So I'm making it quite thicker. You can actually play with this one and see what really works for you. All right, so once this is done, you can go ahead here and also say that you want the railways to be completely visible. So that means one. If you want to make them for some reason completely invisible, that would be zero. And everything between zero and one are just different levels of transparency. Okay, now that we added both these layers, the very last step is to plot them. And here we are using again ray shader and plot 3D function. So again, we need to uh, define here the height map. Then we need to define how rugged this terrain is going to be denoted here with this that scale. So it goes from one up. One it means it's extremely rugged terrain. So I went for 15, but if you want, you can choose even higher value. The benefit of choosing even higher value is that also your shadows are not going to be that sharp, the, the shadows in the background, because you're not going to have that, uh, you know, rugged terrain or that much. All right. The second thing uh, we like to do here is to turn off the, the solid lines around the plot itself. So basically it's going to be borderless uh, plot. And then we also want to say here that we definitely want uh, definitely want the shadows to be included. And here we can also specify what is going to be the shadow darkness. And the value of one means that are going to be very, very soft. You can also here choose what is going to be the background color. And I usually go here for white. And then finally, you can choose uh, and customize some things. One of them is, for example, the window size. Uh, and here we're going to actually go for uh, something with the width of 800 pixels by, let's say, a height of 600 pixels. Okay, and then finally, you can also choose here the zoom. So 0.55, which means it's somewhere in the middle because one means it's completely zoomed out and zero means completely zoomed in into the object. 
All right, and then you can also choose here uh, the degree angle of your scene. Uh, I choose something very close to the normal degree, so uh, 89 degrees. And finally, you can also choose here whether it's gonna be tilted around uh, the Z axis. And here I choose not to be tilted, so it's gonna be just like normal. Okay guys, and once you actually run that code and render your scene, you should be able to see the scene that looks like this. All right, once you have this, if you're happy how it looks like, we can proceed with the next step, which is rendering our object. And over here, what we actually first need to do before we jump into that is I want to use here a custom source of light. And for that purpose, I'm actually going to be using one of them that were used in the previous tutorials, which is a source of soft, warm light found at the polyhaven.org website and it's called Photo Studio Lock Hall 4K. So this one is, we first of all need to, of course, download it if it's not already downloaded. And uh, for that, we simply use here, again, download file. So here we choose uh, the URL, or actually for the URL, we choose uh, this U file name. Then for the destination file, what we can do is we can create a new uh, object yield, so HDRI file, and then we simply need to uh, get the name of the file from this link. So this is what we're going to do. And then we can pass this also over here, uh, which is going to help us so create the name of uh, the downloaded file. And finally, we also want this one to be the binary mode of downloading. So then the very last step is to give our image that we will save locally once we render this object and maybe we can call it simply 3d rail away north macedonia and then of course here you need to also put extension in this case i want it to be saved as a png all right guys we have all the ingredients and now we just need to go again the ray shader and uh, choose a render high quality function and then here the first thing we want to define is the name of the file because i do want to save it locally so i can just use this image underscore name then uh, i definitely want to see the preview as this process renders uh, but i definitely don't want to see don't want to interact with the plots as it does so interactive will be switched off here and one thing I also definitely want to have here is lights. So lights are going to be here uh, uh, turned on. Now, for the lights, we are not going to be using like the standard default lights. As I said before, we're going to be using environmental environment lights. So environment lights allows you to use the file that we simply previously downloaded. So this HDRI file. And over here, you can then choose what is going to be the intensity of that, uh, of that light. So intensity and, uh, and then I would say one is kind of a default. So if you want to decrease a bit, uh, you can uh, select, for example, 0.6 as I did. And then in some of the last steps, what you can do is you can also define some other things. For example, you can uh, utilize the parallel uh, option here. So the parallel course. Uh, so that it's rendered a bit faster. What you can also do is perhaps make the lines also thicker if you're not uh, happy uh, with the way you are. So you can use this argument line or radius and put, for example, here three or five, whatever you choose. And then here for the width and the height, you should actually follow those uh, ratios, those proportions that you choose when you were creating the scene. So we can, for example, do for the width 800 pixels, maybe we can slightly increase it, slightly five times. And then you can also do the same for the height. And I definitely suggest here that if you are multiplying the width, you should also do the height so that the final image is not distorted. All right, and then once you actually run this whole chunk in this section, uh, you should be able finally to see a very crisp map of a Macedonian elevation in blue and then also overlaid with the railways which are in yellow. And that's all for today, folks. In today's tutorial, you learned how to overlay your 3D relief maps with the railways which we took from the OpenStreetMaps 
The good news is you can do this for any country around the world if you follow this tutorial. And I'm really looking forward to your own use cases and how you take this tutorial on a journey across the world. If, however, you're interested in simply replicating today's analysis, I prepared a link to the GitHub repo in the description box below. Do check it out. Feel free to clone it, modify it, reuse it as you see fit. If you have any questions, comments, or just general feedback, feel free to reach out to me here on YouTube, but also on Instagram and X. If you're new to R and you seek to expand your knowledge of data visualization and geospatial knowledge with R, I've prepared a few cool tutorials for you, so do check them out. See you next time.